This is Joe Ray Goyaso, and you're watching and listening to the Founded Translation Talk Show, the talk show that sex truth about politics and today's hottest issues. Thank you again so much for joining us. This is Joe Ray Goyaso on this uh, well, live, a uh, pretty late night on a Sunday evening edition of Founded Translation on Periscope on Twitter. Thank you for joining us if you're watching this live on uh, Twitter at FIT underscore uh, talk show. Thank you again so much for joining us. Uh, normally, this show is done as a video show on Thursday evenings or on many primetime hour evenings um, and then upload it as a podcast. I really wanted to get this out Sunday night. Um, and so many of you are watching and listening to this on Monday morning. Thank you again. So if you're having your morning coffee, Cafe Con Ray, thank you so much for spending a little time with us on your Monday. Again, you also listen to the show as a podcast anywhere you download a podcast, iTunes, Stitcher, wherever including now for my Android heads, you people that just love those Samsung phones and those tablets on Google Podcasts. So now you can download us, Found in Translation talk show and Found in Translation podcast on Google Podcast. And again, as a radio show on WPPMLP 106.5 in Philadelphia. Again, thank you so much for joining the podcast, the, the, the talk show family. So I, I couldn't let that I go. I was actually doing podcast-related work. How are you, Shirley? Great to see you, dear. Um, I couldn't... I had to get this out. I had to sound off before I went to bed and get this content to you from Monday morning as you started your week. Of course, you're probably not... You either, you either are a first responder on some level that's going to put yourselves on the front lines, whether it's at a supermarket or as a police officer or uh, a nurse, uh, someone that works at a hospital, God bless all of you, our first responders. You're all first responders now. Uh, truck drivers, y'all are the heroes of the story. No question about that. Or you're like me who's going to go 20 feet to go to work, work from home, the privilege of that. And, of course, many of us, tens of millions of Americans, don't have the privilege to even work in any scenario and are currently now furloughed from their job. So for those folks, the people that we have the most cariño for, uh, the government assistance is on the way and we're, ho we're here for you in any way we can to get you over this transition period. I thought it was important to say a few words about kind of where we're at right now in late February of 2020 and then where we should be as we go into this week. So today or yet la yesterday, President Trump spilt, you know, basically said what we already knew, what I could have told you three weeks ago, that the, you know, this this current shelter in place posture needs to be in place nationally, at least by the end of April. So we're looking at, you know, officially a seven week quarantine, the reality. going on so we're at two months here and that's best case scenario he also shared that we have every reason to believe and again we all knew this three weeks ago that we're looking the way the united states has handled this and particularly the way he bungled by ignoring the problem for multiple months leading up to a few weeks ago and as late as late february call a month ago he called this situation a hoax Fast forward, nary 30 days later, we're at almost 3,000 people dead. Probably be 3,000 by the time you hear this and watch it. Over 100,000 people tested positive, but scores of people that have symptoms that we could, that just, they don't have the access to the test, so we don't know. So probably another a factor of 10 on that, potentially. And that even he's admitting the president's admitting that what his scientists, again, have pretty much been insinuating for several weeks that we're looking the way we've handled it at this point. And even if we do a pretty good job, an A minus B plus job handling it moving forward, we're looking at 80 to 200,000 people dying from COVID 19 coronavirus. An American tragedy on historic proportions. And so 
Wow. You know, and beyond the deaths and the illness and the, we're basically, he's imprisoned us. He's, our president is so incapable of doing this job. He's not only left us in danger, but he's literally imprisoned us in our own homes if we're lucky. He talks about his TV ratings. You know, this is a, you know, if you were in an NBA class or, you know, watching one of these hotshot CEOs give a TED Talk or some sort of leadership training, this would be a case study on what leadership is not about, and, and, and executive leadership, people that are in charge of managing large systems, what not to do. Ignore the situation until it gets worse and worse and worse. Then, when you finally have to address the situation, you blame you you pass along the buck in every way possible to deflect uh, responsibility for what's going on, from appointing vice president, for telling the states they got to do things on their own. He has under his purview the Federal Emergency Management Association agency. It's what they do. To any time they would today, when everyone said, "Well, can you talk more about this other thousand people that's probably going to die?" He was so gutless. He's such a coward that he kept Fauci and Burks would answer those questions. I've never seen such a cowardice person my entire life. We got people out here going to work every day, putting themselves on the front lines for this country, for their patients, for our food supply, so they can support their families. And this coward who's born a silver spoon in his mouth can't just be straight with us what's going to happen. And by the way, he throws in his narcissism. He And by the way, he's had his surrogates, like Lieutenant, I'm going to keep talking about this guy, Lieutenant Governor Dan Patrick in Texas to say, well, I'd rather, wouldn't we rather have a strong economy and let a few old people go? <clears throat> Multiple surrogates have floated this idea. This is actually a conversation happening in conservative media circles. They don't mean your grandmother, their grandmother, Pop. I'm talking all these people, and I'm talking specifically to everybody, but specifically to people that still hold a little bit of candle for this guy and actually believe anything he says. They're not talking about their family people. They're talking about your people and you. He doesn't care. He actually now has set the bar so low that he actually has set the, the bar he said today was, well, if we did nothing, 3 million people would die. So if we only lose a couple hundred thousand, I did a good job. Because if I did nothing, we would have lost 2 million. As if that is the standard. Listen, Ray Koyasso, Family Translation. I'm obviously not that happy, frustrated. And we're going to talk today about what we're going to do because we we have a lot to fight for here. No question about it. You know, the last thing I wanted to share, a couple more things on this I wanted to share was. And then the biggest thing he does to address the situation, let's be clear what happened last week with the money, the $2 trillion deal to try to deal with this. And ultimately, I'm not saying at this moment that was the concept was the worst thing, but, you know, when someone, you know, you ever do in your life a humongous screw-up? You know, like, steal your your dad's car, luxury, you know, <laughs> crash it, or, you know, run away from your wife and run up her credit cards. <laughs> like, you know, like, just total screw-up stuff. You know what I mean? Like, humongous screw-up stuff. And then when you're confronted with the humongous screw up you did, and you have to, and then you're confronted with how you're going to make amends for this screw up. You know, it's kind of the quintessential way people like that get out of things. They find someone else to screw over and give them the, the, the responsibility. 
So what did he just do? When he screwed up, he let it go for two months. I'm not saying nobody would have died. Obviously, there was, this would have been a problem, even in the best case scenario. But in general, 100,000 people, 20,000 people shouldn't die from this if he had handled it correctly. And everyone, even if you like this guy or you voted for him, you know that's the truth. I mean, wake up. You know that. You have your own eyes. You have your own brain. Stop watching Fox News. Pay attention. He puts the bill. He rungs up a credit card that's not his. It's ours. Somebody, it may be our grandchildren, but somebody's eventually going to pay this $2 million back because back, it's just more debt for the country. So that's how he handled it. Did he, did he dip into his personal fortune? Did he rally any sort of, you know, resources? Can, can we put any, ho any emergency hospital facilities in all these properties the guy has? Rung up the bill. And by the way, a quarter of the bill, credit card, is half a trillion dollars for business bailouts and his administration. The ink wasn't even dry on the on the on the bill. When his administration sent a note saying, Well, you know, there's not gonna be a congressional oversight. We're gonna really just give out the money however we want. Trump will eventually become a billionaire because we're gonna be writing him a check. And the last thing on before I get to what do we do from here, I do want to say, not that I say I want to tell you so, but we've been saying for quite some time, you all need to listen to Puerto Ricans. Because this gate, this playbook of how this person handles emergencies, tragedies, and these sort of situations, and just man base of management challenges, is exactly what happened in Puerto Rico. Crappy response. Slow response, malicious response, and then when you get called out on it, you blame everybody else. So now you'll know how we feel. So when we said, you know, say you don't treat people, especially, you know, I mean, you, know, you don't treat people this way. Eh, it's Puerto Rico. It's like a you know, it's like a it's like a, a joke in dark comedy, right? Like uh, everything bad happens in Puerto Rico. It's Puerto Rico. No, it's three million people live on that island, eight million human beings that are part of this country. You need to recognize and respect. Treat us like everybody else. What happened with these children on the border? Just by the way, those are the people that keep me up at night. Those young people and those people that are incarcerated while they. They, they try to come here legally. They're dealing with a lot of situations. The worst thing to happen, the worst thing, the worst thing these people try to do is cross a, a line so they go work cheap for you. It's the worst thing they want to do. And we're going to treat these people this way, and God for, God knows how many. There's already been reports that there's many sick. God knows how many people are going to die. And by the way, not to make this, this more of a downer, but we got to keep it real. Y'all don't listen. Y'all need to listen. When I said this two years, three years ago, and I said, this is how Nazism started. He was like, okay, tu es bien dramático. You're dramatic. And I know some of my non-Latino friends, minority friends, like, oh, this guy, you know, liberals. Listen to what I'm saying. Anne Frank and her people didn't die in a gas chamber. They died because they were put in an incarcerated situation, and they were left to die, and, and they died of disease. What do you think is going to happen to these people, these people on the border, yo? I mean, can we think here for a second what's going on? What do you think is going to happen to our incarcerated population? So where do we go from here with this cheery news? Well, the first thing is, and I'm just being real honest about it, we need to save ourselves. We need to save ourselves. Because if you listen to him, I, again, I'm not trying to, it, it's not even political anymore. If you listen, if you really listen to him and on some level think this is an exaggeration or I can fudge, maybe in a couple of weeks, ain't a big deal. If you listen to him, if you listen to him, you will die or someone in your family or someone in your network will die because of you and whoever's listening to him's uh, foolishness. Grow up. It's real clear what's going down. 
So we're going to save ourselves. And I plead with my people, and I don't want to call nobody out because I know it sucks. And I know that we want to be in the house. I see, you know, I mean, you start to see little dribbles, you know. I want to go get something to eat. I want to do something. You all need to stay at home and do everything you can to protect your loved ones because you don't know, even if you're the healthiest people in the world, somebody in your crib got asthma, somebody's old, somebody's young, somebody got a condition. You don't know, even if you're a healthy person, you don't know a foreign virus is going to hit your body. You just don't know. I don't know. You don't know. We are like in this weird first world way. We are like at war. And unfortunately, we have to protect ourselves. The second thing is we need to support each other. Because what's going to happen now, we're going to go into week three, week four, week five, week six. The psychological element of this situation is really going to hit people. So whether that's a spiritual dimension, whether it's just being more, I think about it in Spanish, cognizant, pendiente, of like maintaining connection with loved ones, use these tools to see people, to connect with them on that level. I'm telling you, I'm telling you, it helps. Connect with our people, stay connected. Stay connected, support them, talk them through what they're going through because this is impacting people on so many levels, mostly not political, financial, mental, spiritual, uh, that feeling of distance. You know, I mean, the, the, the biggest, I mean, the biggest thing for me is I know that for another at least, at least five weeks, at least if I'm lucky, that I'm not going to see nobody except my immediate people in this crib. Which, so thank God I'm with them. Or wife, my kid. Thank God. Thank God. I'm crazy fortunate. And I'm all better than most people. I know that. And trust me. But I'm going to see my I'm not going to fit. I talk to them. I can see them on FaceTime. But it ain't the same. I ain't going to see my parents. I can see my brothers. All my homies. All my nephews. Niece. I mean, so I can imagine. And I'm one of the lucky ones. So I can imagine what other people are going through. You know? So be there to support each other and whatever you can do to support the most vulnerable, whether it's food pantries, uh, our immigrant community, our homeless population, our people that, you know, that help, even if it's just helping a relative apply for the unemployment, helping them through one of those processes. I mean, there's all there's ways we can help people. And I think how the last thing on this piece is well, let's take it for the blessing that it is. And I know that seems very counterintuitive what I just talked about for the last 15 minutes, the first 15 minutes. But we have to take within it the blessing. And that's been a struggle for me. But you know what? You, if you're with your loved ones, this could be a time that you may never spend this kind of hard, this kind of consistent time with them ever. Let's be real. You're going to go to work. You're going to move around. Your kids are going to get older. So if you're in that situation, cherish that time. Utilize this time. Take it for the blessings that it is. Ground yourself in what's really important. Because this is like a, a national spiritual retreat that we're all on. We're just doing it separately. But fortunately, most of us have someone to live with and experience it together. So let's take the blessings from it. That'll help relieve the stress. Because as you can see, if you if you think about this stuff too much, it'll drive you crazy. And then on kind of the civic side, we got to do what we have to do for ourselves. In the same way, we have to hold ourselves accountable to stay at home and do the things we need to do for our families and for our personal health and to support our loved ones and our friends, and just anyone on the front lines, the first respond community, is that we have to hold this administration accountable to remind people and to center this conversation around where it started, which is the screw up in the beginning, the humongous screw up in the beginning, in the subsequent daily little screw ups in the last few weeks because he don't want to make a decision. He doesn't want to hold anybody accountable and he's just generally acting responsible. Gotta hold him accountable. Gotta hold him accountable. 
and remind people of that accountability. Because you know what? If you're in that position, and certainly if I was in that position, and God forbid someone like Obama's in that position, it'd be all kind of accountability. You'd be getting impeached right now by Congress. They would come back for that. They would impeach Obama as we speak. If could you imagine? I mean, could you imagine? Obama goes, eh, 100,000 people. Hey, if I had to do nothing, two million would have died. So you're lucky I'm here. You're lucky I have a pulse. You're lucky I come to, I wake up. Digital Shrek Goyaso, thank you so much for joining Trail and Translation. Last thing is, be a good citizen, my friends. You have a little free time now, here and there. Commuting has, all that commute time you have, don't have anymore. If you have a little free time, first we'll do the census. You have till April 1st, very important. I was remiss to share about it on the show the other day. Do the sense online. It takes I did this. Uh, did it uh, Saturday. It took seven minutes. Very easy. Because if you don't, they're gonna knock on your door. So if that happens, whenever that's gonna happen, you know, July or something. So make sure you fill out the census. Very important. And make sure everyone in your house and everyone you know, you know, do it tomorrow. But in the coming weeks, make sure everyone in your network is registered to vote. Okay. Because however you feel now, you're going to have all kinds of feelings. Some may change. May, some may be the same. Some may be different. If, we're, if you're alive, you know, and you know, if you're here, I hope you're here. But I'm just being honest. We're going to lose some people here. We've already lost people. You're going to want to express yourself in November after this, uh, this disaster this disaster stay grounded my friends take care of yourselves save yourself I'm not trying to be dramatic I'm just being honest save yourselves protect your loved ones be smart we have to be mentally disciplined because I know in two three weeks we're all going to want to fudge uh, let me travel there see my cousin let me let me go grab that pizza i know we're going to want to fudge we have to do everything we can to minimize social contact we just have to because there are now we really don't even know how vast the spread is at this point you know i mean that's the reality of it because how many of us have gotten tested a very small percentage protect ourselves ground yourself in the blessing of the moment which i know is difficult but ground yourself in the blessing of the moment think for yourselves family please think for yourselves don't get caught up. And you look, look, you don't have to take it from me. Just look at the facts of the situation. You know, would 100,000 people dying of anything be acceptable? Come on. So let's see, you know, understand what happened. Understand the facts. Don't listen to anything he says. And, and protect yourself. Thank you so much for joining this edition of Found Translation. You know, I get all the about subscribe. I just want y'all to protect yourselves. You know, be great. You could subscribe and let people know about it. That's awesome. But at this point, that's not even that important. You know, I appreciate you, Shirley. Shirley on on uh, Periscope is sharing. I think there's a Shirley I know. Thank you and God bless you. I appreciate all that you do. Thank you so much, Shirley. I appreciate you. And continued blessings to you, Shirley. kind of people we got to do it for you know a lot of good people out here look at all the good people that, that are coming out of the uh thank you shirley appreciate you there um that are coming out of the stories the heroes my god nurse i mean the medical community i mean you see these 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 doctors going on facetime and doing whatever they can to let the media know what's going down crying because they're like I'm putting myself in harm's way personally, but I can't turn my back on these people. I mean, a lot of heroes out there, y'all. We got to, you know, whether they're on a farm picking the vegetables you go eat this week or these doctors and everyone in between the truck. I mean, a lot of heroes, a lot of heroes. And uh, so we should feel good about that. So you're around, you're, you're around a lot of goodness. You're around a lot of blessings. You're a lot around people with moral standing. Maybe some confused people, you know, but we can we can figure that out, you know. But right now, let's ground ourselves in our humanity, in our spirituality, in the blessings that are coming out of this time. But don't be a fool. Because if you act, keep acting foolish, 
and playing these like funny games, you're going to die. And I don't want you to die. I don't want anyone to die. I don't want you to get sick. Thank you for joining Found Translation family. Enjoy your week. That's all I got to say. Enjoy your week. I care about y'all. I care. Uh, I want y'all to be all right. Have a great day.